Hey everyone, Aisha here. So I wanted to talk to you about a really important message today. So today's topic is going to be about the topic, single mom, do not let stereotypes or, you know, negative opinions of single motherhood impact your hope. And so I wanted to talk about this because I remember when I first became a single mom, um, I was pregnant and I was really struggling with the stereotypes about who single moms are and who other people said about single moms and what society quote unquote said about single moms. And I began to adopt that narrative as my own and how I felt about myself. So when I first started FM Phenomenal, and matter of fact, not when I first started it, but when I shifted it from focusing on single women and finances to be able to focus on single moms and finances, one of the things that I found myself doing was approaching the work that I do with single moms and money from a place of proving, from a place of trying to get people to realize that I was just as valuable as a married mom and that my kids were just as valuable as the children of married moms because I felt a lot of inadequacy and insecurity around it. A big reason because of my own expectations about what motherhood would be for me, you know, married and then having kids. And, you know, my parents are married. They've been married forever since before I was born. And so I felt like a disappointment to begin with because I was unmarried. But then the other thing was I was looking around at the statistics. Every time you turn around, you see something about, oh, you know, the children of single moms have this expectancy. Oh, single moms have this expectation for wealth or lack thereof. It was always this negative portrayal of single moms, right? And so, you know, I feel like I've been in a lot of reflection lately. Um, in terms of the narratives that I see in the media, in terms of what I've noticed and what I see in culture. So when you look at movies, for example, how are single moms portrayed? Are they portrayed in an empowering light? I think maybe Erin Brockovich, was she a single mom or something? Maybe I think she was she was a single mom. But if she was, you know, I think she might have been portrayed as strong. But if you're black, you're portrayed as a welfare queen. You're portrayed as being beefed out with your baby daddy or your baby mama. Um, when you look at the entertainment industry, especially with black women, they're portrayed as this ghetto baby mama who's angry, bitter, um, broke, and the kids are a hot mess. And it's just a lot. It's just a lot to be constantly bombarded with these evil stereotypes and these negative stereotypes about who single moms are. And it's easy if you're not strong in your mind or rooted in Jesus Christ or have a good understanding of who you are or aren't healed enough to be able to adopt those narratives as your own. And that was where I began to come from. I began to parent my kids from a place of fear because I didn't want them to have these negative outcomes that constantly heard on the news. Um, Another one, whenever people mention crime, it's always like, you know, single moms and kids and crime. And so it's always connected with negative outcomes. And so I remember for whatever reason, filling myself with that, filling myself with the statistics, filling myself with what the news would say about single moms. And then I began to actively go into this place where I wanted to parent the opposite of what I was seeing in the news. And so what that caused is this hyper-focused stress on what I didn't want instead of focusing on what I wanted and who I wanted to be as a healed woman, as a healed mom, and who I wanted my kids to be. And so I say all of that to say, we have to begin to change our focus. We have to begin to allow ourselves to define who we are, who we're going to be through Jesus Christ, right? Because Ephesians 2.10 says, for we are God's workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works for which God prepared um, from the beginning of the world. I think I think I have that right. And so when we, when we understand who we are in Christ, we can begin to shed the narratives about who it is that we are supposed to be. And so I, I just think about, um, 
you know, even this whole welfare queen example of who especially black moms, black single moms are. And so when we're told by the media, when we're told by politicians, when we're told by the entertainment industry that black single moms or even single moms in general are impoverished, poor, kids have poor outcomes, there's no hope, right? There's no hope. That's the constant message that we're being portrayed. And then even when um even when Roe v. Wayne got overturned, one of the biggest things that I've noticed in the coverage of that was how people were saying you needed Roe v. Wade to how to so women wouldn't become single moms because if they become single moms, all their hopes, all their dreams, everything they work for is going to be gone and that their kids are going to suffer because they're raised by a single mom. Like, how is that narrative helpful? How is that narrative helpful for anyone, a pregnant single mom or an existing single mom to be constantly bombarded? by the media and advocates to say that because of her life situation, because of her marital status, that there's no hope for her. Like that is wrong. That is wrong. And so it's almost like it's being coming from all sides. It's like the politicians saying that there's no hope. So you have to have an abortion because there's no hope. And if you don't, you know, your life is going to be destroyed and your kids' lives are going to be destroyed. So what about the mom who doesn't have the abortion? What about the mom who carries the term? So now she's going to be looking at this like, is there hope for me, right? And so then you have the media and these constant negative portrayals of single moms as being welfare queens, impoverished, poor, their kids are bad. And it's just, it's not good. And so I say all of this to say, we have to be able to focus on the positive. We have to be able to focus on who we are in Christ. We have to be able to find good examples of single moms who are rocking it out, raising amazing kids, pursuing their dreams, building healthy finances. So that way we can begin to counter the narratives in our own minds. Because even sometimes we can be consciously aware that negative portrayals or negative stereotypes can be impacting us, but we still might not have the power to be able to shift and begin to think about something differently. I, I'm, a, I'm a great example of that. I had the awareness that these negative stereotypes were causing me to parent opposite of what I saw in the news in terms of statistics, but I was fo so focused on the bad that I was not focused on the good. And so we can be so consumed with trying to be the obstacle, the opposite, opposite, instead of resting in who we are, our callings, our gifts, and who God has called us to be. Because we are more than conquerors through Jesus Christ, right? All things work together for the good of those who love him and are called according to his purpose. We know that the Bible says that children are a heritage from the Lord. So we have to be able to understand that, resist the other narrative that will cause us to doubt who we are, our identity in Christ Jesus, and it causes us to believe that there's no hope for our situation and for our lives. And so, you know, it's, it's really interesting to that so much of this, I'm trying to decide like, oh, if I want to go here because I have I have some notes, but um, I just started to talk from the heart. Um, yeah, it's just it's so interesting because when you even when you look at history, I think that this kind of gets to the point where we have to understand our history and have to understand our power and not allow it to be our history to be stripped from us. Because when I, when I look back during the times of, when was this? Like the 30s or 40s, something like that, before integration um, and, and after slavery, there was this time period after slavery, I think during the reconstruction or after the reconstruction where black families had two parent households. Black families were thriving economically and educationally. And so... You know, we had things like Black Wall Street. We had economic opportunity and the Black community was thriving in the midst of very, very difficult circumstances. And so a lot of things happened over the years to, to destroy that. But with that destruction, for some reason, we have this like weird struggle history, this struggle history of like 
are, who we are began at slavery and who we are is, is this place of struggle. And this is constantly what is re being reinforced to the black community, that your history is struggle. You know, you don't have a lot of economic advancement. You have to rely on the government to be able to get ahead. And there's really no hope outside of someone else coming into your community to rescue you. Right. That's a message that's being told by the black community. We're not being told for you know a variety of reasons about who we are, our wealth, our power and what it is that we came from. And so when we don't understand our history, when we don't know our power, when we don't know who we are. And I remember a friend of mine, I just thought about this. A friend of mine posted something on social media that said black women are really the only women who are being told that there is pride in being an independent woman, right? And so we're being told that there's pride in not having support. There's pride in um, doing it yourself. There's pride in, um, you know, in, 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 in being, uh, you know, unmarried, things like that, right? And so... <laughs> And so when I say all I have to say, when we don't understand our history, we can fall for anything, right? And I think that this same message translates also to single motherhood, right? Because we're being told that there's economic hopelessness. There's not opportunity, right? And so there's government dependency. And so when you look at some of the, some of the political races over the years, right? When they go into communities with high numbers of single moms, they promote welfare, they promote um, handouts, they promote, they promote, you know, government checks, but not things that would advance economic opportunity. And so I say all of that to say to connect it to our history, because when we understand who we are, we'll say, no, we don't want this. We don't want this. What we want to do is build up our community. What we want to do is build up our family. What we want to do, and, and Black women are some of the biggest um, groups for entrepreneurship. But what we can do is build up our communities, build businesses, do things that will change and improve our communities, and also build a life of legacy for our children. We will reject politicians and people who try and tell us that we're something that we're not. I mean, yeah, the data might say things about, you know, the economic opportunity of single moms, but does that have to be your reality? Do statistics have to be your reality? Jesus is the, the biggest statistic, you know, uh, buster ever, right? I mean, I mean, when you look at the work of Jesus Christ, he took a couple of loaves of fish, a couple of loaves of bread and some fish and fed a multitude. Statistics would say that that's not possible. So how many of you are listening to people? How many of you are listening to people tell you what's not possible and you're believing it? We have to begin to change what it is that we focus on. We have to believe first that we can be new. That what these people are saying is not true. It doesn't have to be our lives. And then we can choose to become and walk in a way that is totally opposite of that. And so I'm just looking uh, to see what else I wanted to talk about um, in this video. And so I say all of this to say, don't allow other people's perceptions and narratives to become your reality. Don't believe that because you're a single mom or you're a pregnant single mom that as a single mom, your hopes and dreams will be ended. That's that's not true. That's a lie. Don't believe that children are a burden. They're not. They're a blessing. They're a heritage from the Lord. And focus on hope. Focus on hope. Find people who are single moms who are doing amazing things. Not for you to be like them, but to remind you that it's possible. It's possible. Like, you're not destined for poverty. Poverty doesn't have to be your outcome. It doesn't. You know, lack of marriage doesn't have to be your outcome. 
lack of purpose or walking in your destiny work does not have to be your outcome. Giving up on your dreams does not have to be your outcome. Because whatever somebody else is telling you is impossible, know that we serve a good God who takes what is impossible and makes it oh very much possible. <laughs> And so, and that's actually why I call my book, Navigating the Impossible, a survival guide for single moms from pregnancy through their first year of motherhood, because I was faced with those same messages of impossibility. You know, the, the father of my twins was trying to force me to have an abortion. And one of the things that he was saying was that, you know, everything that, you know, you would see negative about single moms, I was being told that. And so for a long period of time, I believed that my walk was impossible, but my children honestly became my biggest, um, my biggest inspiration and my motivation and to be able to change my mindset, to not walk away, walk around from this place of feeling defeated, feeling broken and feeling like I didn't matter to recognizing my own worth, my own power, recognizing that stereotypes and statistics don't have to define me, but I can look at the Bible and see how God defined me and choose to walk in the freedom and my identity in Christ. And that for me was a game changer. I was able to have less stress. I stopped spending my money in crazy ways, even though I was teaching financial, personal finances. I was dealing with so much emotion that it was reflecting in my finances. And I began to walk in my purpose. I began to realize I didn't have to shrink back because someone rejected me. I didn't have to shrink back because of my marital status. But I could stand bold, boldly, right? And be someone that encouraged other people because I was able to find that encouragement within my own heart. And have the hope to be able to move forward. And so if you want to pick up the book, it's over at navigatingtheimpossiblebook.com. Navigatingtheimpossiblebook.com. And it's also available on Amazon. So if you get it from navigatingtheimpossiblebook.com, you can get a signed copy. And if you get it from Amazon, it's not signed. <laughs> so, but anyway, make sure you grab your book, share this video. Let me know how this helps you. I literally just wanted to talk from the heart. I had this whole page of notes. I've been wanting to record this video for a couple of days, but I didn't really know what I was going to say. And so I just decided to record it and just speak from the heart. So I hope that this um, encouraged you. I hope that this uplifts you. And I hope that this gives you hope to continue to move forward.